And we are back on the open line. We are talking about medical malpractice. Attorney Clint Kelly from the Kelly Firm, one of the experts in the field, is with us this evening. Uh, Clint's one of the most popular guests that we have here because it's a situation where I know a lot of people have questions about what do I do? What's the first step? What, what, what should I do? Clint, we were talking a little bit about it in the break, and, uh, you know, there's really a, a starting place here. There is, which is calling my office. You call the phone number that shows up on the screen, and when you call, if you suspect that you've been a victim of a major medical mistake or family member has, ask to speak to Nurse Kathy. Kathy Farrell is our consultant nurse. She works for our office. She's got uh, years, decades of nursing experience, uh, and she is able to basically take a history, diagnose the case, report back to me and let me know if the case needs further investigation by a medical expert. So I think that's one of the things about our firm that makes our firm unique uh, and perhaps better than some others is because we have access to people like that uh, all day long. And she is an extremely valuable person to uh, help us and she's uh, helped me get settlements, substantial ones, because of her good work. Well, it makes a difference, and you see the number on your screen right there, that 615-824-3703. Jot that number down, and like Clint was saying, that's the first step, and that's what you should do when you have one of these questions. And, you know, it makes so much sense when you have an expert, you, Nurse Kathy. I mean, this is right. someone who knows probably within just, you know, 30 seconds to a minute if someone has a case that they feel, that, that she feels that your firm needs to talk to and that kind of thing. Yeah, and this is expert-driven litigation, so it's very important to have somebody who knows what they're doing, who can help you uh, understand and judge the medical merits of the case so that we take the right cases. Right, and, and when you think about this too, I was just kind of looking at the list of some of the uh, cases and some of the reasons that people do call you, whether it's a surgical mistake, birth trauma, anesthetic error, prescription mix-up, hospital mistake, nursing negligence, physical, physician negligence, misdiagnosis of a medical condition. I mean, there's a long list, and this is the thing that you should do, is call Clint's office. Uh, we definitely want you to call in this evening. We're happy to talk to you, get your questions and comments, but there is a starting place so uh, hopefully you got that number and we will be showing it throughout the show we are going to go back to our lines if you do have a question or a comment for clint the number is on your screen 737-7587 gregory is on the line with us right now gregory thanks for uh, joining us this evening do you have a question or a comment for clint yeah i have a, a question maybe and a comment okay um, what i wanted to ask was i have um, a situation where i went to southern hills hospital to um, have a CT scan. I thought I was having a stroke. Uh, the entire time I was there, I never saw a physician, not one time. Uh, there were two or three rooms available with fifth people in. Um, I never did get, go inside of an exam room. Um, they set me outside in a chair up next to the wall to give me a bag of saline intravenously. And while I was sitting there, a wall clock um, that was um, halfway mounted to the wall above me, behind me, fell and hit me on the head. Um, so um, I'm not really sure what to do, where to go from there. I spoke with the CEO at the hospital. Uh, he basically has no desire whatsoever to do anything but make jokes and, and make light of my situation. And this isn't the first time that I've been uh, treated uh, poorly medically uh, at that hospital and uh, I asked if I could see the tape and I wasn't allowed to so I'm not really sure where I start because I can't get a, uh, an attorney to take my case um, blah 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 you know the story so um, I don't know what should I do you think uh, well there's a number of different issues there what he has pointed out is something that I'm seeing more often myself in cases that I evaluate and that's what I call curbside medicine where you go into the hospital and you're basically put to the side. You don't even necessarily make it to an exam room. Uh, you'll have some testing done by a triage nurse and you'll never see a medical doctor. And that's becoming, I think, more common, uh, particularly in the rural areas, but it's also happening here in, in the cities. And that's a simple matter of uh, the hospitals have decided that they can uh, put nurse practitioners and physician assistants in these emergency rooms and only bring the medical doctor in when it's absolutely necessary. People think when they go to the emergency room, well, we're going to see a doctor. Wrong. You may, but then again, you may not. Uh, as for the clock hitting him on the head, I mean, clearly that, that's one of those things that is negligent. 
I suspect that Gregory you might not have had your case taken by an attorney because there was a judgment made that your injuries weren't sufficient to warrant the lawsuit that's just probably what happened and and it's unfortunate that uh, a hospital like that can't even keep their furniture and their equipment stable when you're in the emergency <laughs> right. room um, but what I want to tell the public people who watch this show you go to the emergency room you ask to see a medical doctor don't take no for an answer particularly if you're not satisfied with the care you've gotten or the opinion that you've gotten from either the nurse or the physician assistant a hospital will make a medical doctor available to you if you ask but like anything else squeaky wheel gets the grease now does it too um, you know because I've had some friends recently telling me about going to the emergency room and how long they kept them waiting mm -hmm. um, you know they were there for hours yeah. um, and you know and it was almost like they said they kind of judged who had the more serious you know problem when they really hadn't assessed them fully so do you see any kind of trend there and well, what should they do in that case what I can do is tell you about a case I've got right now where a lady went into a local hospital with a small bowel obstruction that's where the the intestines are clogged up uh, where you can't pass uh, feces and it can kill you if it's not dealt with quickly and she was in the emergency room and stayed out in the hallway for five and a half hours in incredibly writhing abdominal pain she was seen by a triage nurse and a physician assistant and they just let her sit out there hmm. by the time they got her to the exam room and had a CT scan done of her insides she burst or at least her intestines were perforated and she died so that is a situation I don't know how common it is but it's awful when it happens and I'm afraid that in situations particularly like her where she didn't have anybody go with her to the hospital you need to have a patient advocate a friend a relative someone who can be with you at all times in the hospital and demand that you get the attention that you should get and make sure that you get the right attention because if you're by yourself and you're sick you really can't protect yourself right well, that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. I mean it almost makes it not to make light of it at all but it almost it, it reminds me of the scene in, in terms of endearment where Shirley McLean is up screaming to get right. her daughter some relief. Right. I mean, it, and, and it sounds like that's kind of an example of what you have to do sometimes when people are in pain and they have a serious condition and they're not getting help. Absolutely, and you know, this is a kind of a side issue, but don't be bashful about asking healthcare providers for help and making sure that they understand what's going on. I, I think healthcare providers want to be challenged because they don't want to make a mistake any more than a, a, a patient wants to have a mistake done on them but be vocal and make sure that you ask all kinds of questions I, I tell people make notes of what's going on in the room what treatments being given who the doctor is the doctors are rotating now so much you can't hardly keep up with who's who's in charge right write that stuff down and make sure that you keep a record of it so that if something comes in say a, another nurse comes in with a medication it doesn't doesn't match up with some of the others ask hey what are you giving Frank here why does he need this nothing wrong with that and it, you know it can save a life because they, they sometimes do give the wrong medications and some people have died from that yeah that, that's part of the tragedy of it uh, again the numbers on your screen if you have a question or a comment 737-7587 Carol is on the line with us right now we're gonna go talk to Carol Carol we appreciate you calling in this evening do you have a question or a comment for Clint I do I have a question okay what if you were put on a benzodiazepine that was supposed to be used only short term and instead of being, it being used short term on you, it was used for 19 whole years and you were not told the severity of that particular medication and as a result, you sustained brain, uh, you, you sustained a, uh, a seizure from the medication and severe chronic insomnia. All right. How do you deal with that? Okay. Okay. The former I know nothing about in terms of benzodiazepines. What she's talking about is there's a number of drugs in that family. It could be um, Xanax, uh, Valium, uh, medications like that. Ativan. They they relax the body. They can relax the uh, your whole system so that you can sleep better. And there's a lot of different reasons why that. Any anxiety is sometimes why it's given. But long story short. If you get on benzodiazepines for a long period of time, it can really screw up your sleep cycle. And some people do develop permanent insomnia because they have to have the benzos to go to sleep. 
Uh, one drug that people don't really think of as a benzodiazepine, but is closely related to the family, is Ambien. Ambien is another drug that has remarkably similar features. It's basically like a benzo light, and some people get on that drug and they don't, they can't get off of it without some other type of a, of a, of a substitute drug to help them wean off the benzo. So, taking it short term, then taking it 19 years, I. I I can't account for why that happens, but I do know that those are the consequences of taking benzos. Right. So, well, I know that is tough. So, Carol, thank you for calling in this evening. Um, you know, another thing is we're talking as people are just tuning in. Um, we were talking about the statute of limitations being one year from the right. time, um, but it's not necessarily because something it's, it's really if you can kind of clarify that it's not necessarily just one. If it was a surgery, maybe something occurred two or three months after the surgery, and that's when that year starts. Correct. It, uh, again, the key point is it's one year from the date that you discover the injury. You may have had surgery performed on you and something was done on the inside that led to a complication that wasn't discovered two or three months after surgery. Well, it's when that discovery is made that that clock starts ticking and you've got one year to make sure that you file pre-suit notice. So it's, again, we can't beat this drum enough. If you suspect that there's been a medical mistake and you've had a major injury, pick up the phone and call because it costs you nothing. Right, very smart, wise words right there. We are gonna take a break, but when we come back, we will continue talking about medical malpractice. There's a lot to talk about. We'll continue taking your questions, your comments, the number's on your screen, 737-7587. We'll take a break and be right back.